Rouge the Bat, a character in the Sonic series who, despite quickly becoming a fan favourite, actually has little to no backstory, especially when compared to many of her co-stars. During development of Sonic Adventure 2, the plan initially was that her name would be Nails and her appearance was a little different, but ultimately she became Rouge and her design was changed to the one we all know and love. But beyond these little development details, we know next to nothing about her before the events of Sonic Adventure 2. She's an enigma, rolled up in a mystery, hidden in a puzzle, wrapped nicely in some of the tightest clothing you'll ever see. <laughs> Stupid sexy Rouge! Yeah, it's pretty easy to see why so many growing boys liked Rouge. Batman has a bat cave, Rouge has bat curves. And I think we all know which one of those is better. But see, this is a very superficial way of looking at her character. And by barely scratching the surface, you can easily miss out on all her awesome depth. Rouge was often marketed in this very superficial and shallow way. Yet, the stories she was in always prove she is anything but those things. In Sonic Adventure 2, Rouge is first introduced as a sassy and stylish jewel thief. Someone who can be put nicely in direct competition with Knuckles when it comes to collecting all those missing Master Emerald pieces. The game immediately sets these two up as rivals to go along with its overall theme of duality, but the narrative has a lot more in store for these two than something that simple. As for Rouge herself, we soon learn that there's much more to her than meets the eye. We see her speaking to a mysterious person on the other end of a radio and learn that she's actually a secret agent, working undercover to gain the trust of Dr. Eggman and learn the secrets of Project Shadow. Even though they settled on Rouge as her name, and I can't really imagine it being anything else now, I think maybe keeping Nails as her agent code name would have been cool. Obviously, it would make no difference to her character or the game narratively, but I'm a sucker to little nods like that to stuff from development or historic references. That's just how my brain works. Like, I don't read Shakes My Head when someone writes SMH. I read Sonic Maurice Hedgehog in a really disapproving tone. I'm different. Rouge buys her way onto Eggman and Shadow's team with a Chaos Emerald and proceeds to help them find more while also collecting Master Emerald pieces on the side. Eggman needs the emeralds to power the Ark's Eclipse Cannon, so most of the game sees Rouge balancing her time between treasure hunting and feeding information back to Gun. It's funny, back when I first played this game, I always used to question the freedom Rouge was given by Gun when undercover. She's directly involved in some crazy shit, where people, including her fellow agents, likely died. And that's not to mention, even the moon took a cap in the ass. But, as an adult, even taking a casual glance at all the shady shit governments get up to these days, it really makes Gun looking the other way here all the more believable. Humans are the worst. By the way, before you clickety-clack away in the comments down there, I know. Eggman pissed on the moon. I know. <sighs> Rouge was clearly a fixer for Gun, a means to an end. Someone they called when they wanted results at any cost. And it's easy to believe that Rouge gets results. She has some seriously impressive researching skills, utilizing her tremendous amount of resources to get any information she needs. Getting info on Tails having an emerald, finding out where three Chaos Emeralds were being kept and proceeding to steal them, and delving into the mysteries of Project Shadow and reporting her findings back to her employer, all under the watchful eyes of Eggman and Shadow. Rouge is insanely intelligent, and we can see this in how easily she can deceive people. After proving herself and building trust, she effortlessly tricks Eggman into handing her the Ark's password, quickly pilfering all the information she can from the Ark's computer. Rouge is used to achieving her goals through deception, and it's funny because this even leads into her way of being nice. When she gives Knuckles his emerald pieces back, she has to do it under the guise of an insult. That they stink, like he does. There's undeniably a lot of sexual tension between Rouge and Knuckles. A flirty rivalry, staring into each other's eyes, some casual strangling. These are the cornerstones of any good relationship. And regardless of how you feel about this particular ship, the effect that Rouge has on Knuckles, always leaving him either frustrated or confused, is highly entertaining. But alongside her relationship with Knuckles, it's also her friendship with Shadow that ultimately helps define Rouge. And by the end of the game, we're looking at a very different character than we were in the beginning. 
At first, Shadow was just a pawn in her game like everyone else. But this all starts to change after he risks his life to save her on Prison Island. She first thinks that this heroism was very unlike him, but she soon learns that this trait actually embodies everything that Shadow is. Which is why when she confronts Shadow directly about his origins after reading about the Bio-Lizard, she actually sounds less accusatory and more concerned as the conversation moves on. But what really seals it for her is his selfless sacrifice. Learning about Shadow's past and watching him give up everything to save her and everyone else awakens something in Rouge. Despite that femme fatale wall she puts up to the world, she's actually a deeply caring individual. You get the impression that Rouge is used to her relationships with others simply being a means to an end. Like her contracts with Gunn, everyone is disposable, and as a result, she's never really made any meaningful connections with anyone. And seeing Shadow throw it all away for the person he loved, and saving the entire planet in the process, tore down all those walls and emotional defenses for her. Despite everything that's happened, she looks for the good in Shadow. The idea that his only purpose was to carry out Gerald Robotnik's revenge just doesn't sit right with her. And she quickly agrees with Sonic that regardless of any of that, he was a hero. So changed is Rouge that when talking to Knuckles at the end, she's even talking about quitting treasure hunting. This must be it. I found Eggman's secret treasure! Yeah, bitch. Give me more than blood diamonds. Make them extra bloody. She says that she has something better than jewels she's thinking about now. And while I've always been 99.9% .9 sure that it's Knuckles she's talking about here, I often small brain wonder to myself if she actually meant Shadow. Not in a romantic way or anything, just that she was deeply moved by what he did and she's just happy to be alive. And on that heavily idealized and likely headcanon note, we move nicely on to Sonic Heroes. In her original game, Rouge was framed as a rival and potential love interest for Knuckles. And while I will always kinda miss that tension they used to have whenever they interacted, I will always miss her more as Mama Dark. Rouge is pretty much the entire reason that Team Dark even existed, and without her social lubricant always keeping things moving forward, Shadow and Omega probably would have killed each other the moment they met. Manipulative and quick-witted, Rouge was the perfect choice to serve as the glue that would form and hold Team Dark together, and this would go on to be a big part of her character, though not as often or for as long as I'd like. With Shadow's amnesia and Omega's bloodlust, recruiting them into her scheme to find Eggman's treasure was a snap. One can argue back and forth all day about whether or not she should have told Shadow the truth about his past, or indeed whether she might have done so, but there's no mistaking that she's genuinely happy to see him again. With Shadow and Omega as her muscle, Rouge is confident enough to run her mouth to pretty much anyone as victory is all but assured with these two having her back. Arguable manipulation aside though, there's something oddly endearing about this band of misfits, and their dynamic together is always a joy to watch. Omega has reason to fear pretty much nothing. He's a 2,700 pound murder machine, but whenever Rouge lays down the law, he becomes oddly submissive and that shit just cracks me up. Whatever it takes, he's mine. Any objections? Negative. She bounces off of Omega's dry personality really well, and I always enjoyed her interactions. For all her talk of treasure, Rouge quickly becomes just as invested in finding answers for Shadow as he is, constantly wondering what Eggman might have meant by his remarks, and showing serious concern for Shadow's mental state when they discover a destroyed clone of him. This is why I honestly think Rouge didn't tell Shadow anything, and I think her reasons were that she was too afraid of what it might do to him. He had already gone on a world-ending rampage before, and now he's left questioning whether he really is who he thinks he is, and not just a clone. Shadow's mind was in a delicate state here, and I think this is the reason Rouge never told Shadow much about the events of Sonic Adventure 2. She's genuinely worried that Shadow might not be real, the sight of hundreds of his clones aboard the Egg Fleet only serving to make her worry more. But Omega shows some of his rare humanity here. You know about cloning. The original must exist somewhere. Roughly translated, he thinks this is the real Shadow. This small gesture relights a fire in Rouge, and it's this support that Team Dark has for each other that makes them standouts, a benchmark for relationships in the series. Alongside Omega, Rouge continues to help Shadow on his journey of self-discovery in his own spin-off game. 
helping him navigate his morality and finally get the truth from Eggman. And after learning that he is the original Shadow, he honors his promise to Maria once again by saving the world, and decides to actually join Gunn so that he can continue doing good alongside his friends. Rouge and the gang are still working together in Sonic 06, though they're never actually referred to as Team Dark anymore. As agents of Gunn, Rouge, Shadow and Omega work to keep the planet safe. I didn't really like the change in her relationship with Knuckles in this game. Rouge still maintains her flirty, bullying dynamic with him like she always has, but now it feels like Knuckles is just overly hostile towards her. It doesn't seem like he's embarrassed or lovestruck anymore, it just feels like he actually hates her. Luckily, her dynamic with her squad remains very much intact. Shadow and Omega are all business on the surface, but there's no mistaking that they all care about each other deeply, happily putting their lives on the line for each other without hesitation. Even as a robot whose decisions are dictated by logic, it could Even as a robot whose decisions are dictated by logic, it clearly pains Omega to tell Shadow that when the world inevitably turns on him, it will likely be Omega himself that will be tasked with putting him down. And just as you'd expect from Mama Dark, Rouge is deeply upset at even the idea of the world turning on Shadow, especially after all the good he's done. It's stuff like this that makes Team Dark so endearing to me, and one of the main reasons I think they resonated with fans in a way that most of the other teams couldn't. We didn't know it at the time, but this would be the last time for a long time that we would experience Team Dark in all their glory. Their dry, witty banter, worrying about each other whenever someone's in trouble, sticking by each other through everything, defying any human or godly force that dares stand in their way. Rouge is ready to throw away her freedom to stand with Shadow against the world. This is the end result of her arc that began all the way back in Sonic Adventure 2. Rouge used to appear as an entirely selfish person. Everyone was just a means to an end for her, a patsy in her games and schemes to get whatever treasure she's after. She didn't need anybody but that all changed with Shadow and Omega. Sonic Adventure 2 to Sonic 06 was a golden time for Rouge. It was like watching that wild, stray outdoor cat becoming an indoor cat, going from a self-absorbed person with purely self-serving motivations to a caring sister that's willing to throw away all of those superficial things for her brothers. Sure, she still shreds the curtains and pisses in the corner sometimes, like wanting to teach a Merle to rob jewelry stores for her in Sonic Battle, but she will never turn her back on her found family. But after 06, Rouge got handed a pink slip just like everyone else whose name isn't Sonic. In Generations, she's just… there? Even the Boom series didn't bother its hole to try and find a use for her. Forces actually seen the Team Dark trio reunited, and try as I might to enjoy that simple fact, it's just the most hollow, flaccid depiction I've ever seen. The writing is terrible, and their dynamic is way off. They have Rouge saying shit like, Do it to it, Shadow. You two go together like chili and hot dogs. What? Rouge doesn't talk like that, which makes it not at all surprising that the writers at that time pretty much had no idea about these characters. And I'm not one to insult the work of any voice actor, but the voice direction she's given here really doesn't work for me. It reeks of, oh, she's sassy and flirty? Just deliver every line like the player called up one of those dodgy chat lines from the old gaming magazines. It cheapens the character, only serving to make her out as one-dimensional. And anyone who's seen Rouge's journey knows that's just bullshit. Frontiers obviously didn't include Rouge, and I kind of understand why. This was the series recalibrating itself under a new writer and a new direction. It was important to get the core group of characters right first, but the sequel really needs to see Rouge and the rest of Team Dark return. The murder of Sonic the Hedgehog teased us in a major way with the untapped potential of Sonic's extended cast, and watching Rouge convince Blaze to carry out a genuine heist during their role-playing game had me more eager than ever to see her return. She's funny, she's badass, and she's teamed with some of the most interesting characters in the series. Just bring her back. Bring them all back. Sonic Frontiers seems to be signaling the end of the Sonic-only approach, but I'll probably believe that a bit more when I finally get my hands on Update 3. But what do you guys think? 
Adventure era? Dark era? What period represents the best Rouge for you? And what would you like to see happen with her going forward or if she appears in Sonic Movie 3? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to hit that bell. You can also join the channel Discord, follow me on Twitter, and you can support my work on Patreon by buying me a coffee or with a super thanks right here on YouTube. As always, it's much appreciated. Plus, if you're a patron, you get to see your name in the video credits. All those links are in the description, so be sure to check them out if you can. But for now, a big thank you for watching, and as always guys, take care.